the alignment of the galaxy, Earth, and solar equators. And I have a beautiful animation of that right here. Look at that. Found it. So galactic equator, solar equator, Earth equator, and at a certain time you see the 90 degree plane. And that's a compression point. And to survive that compression, all structures will be tested. That's sort of the metaphor. Now, where I'd like to go in this conversation at this moment to try to finish one thought <laughs> um, is about time. Uh, just remember I showed Planck length, golden ratio equals hydrogen and all black holes. Uh, now we'd like to apply that to the study of time, which would be relevant to your interest in astrology, hopefully. You know the famous book, of course, The Spiral Calendar by Carol Ann. It's related to the prediction of the stock market by golden ratio, Prechter and Elliott Wave. We wrote some equations. We think we can perfect that story, actually. You do a second order power spectrum step stream of the volume analysis and look for golden ratio. <laughs> Anyone who wants to play with that, we'll do some software. So the spiral calendar showed that you um, can take golden ratio as a pattern in time and predict when events emerge from chaos. And the key was golden ratio in time. Now, I subsequently wrote some new equations, very, very simple, but very, very powerful, to analyze the nature of coincidence. And I just want to point out how this fits what we're talking about at this moment. Goldenratio.com slash coincidence. And you'll see my very simple equations. It's an extension of, while we're having our conversation about things like Mayan calendar, in 2012, that I started with Joff Stray, who's a good friend, who analyzed the Mayan calendric for golden ratio and produced this chart based on golden ratio in time for the Mayan calendar, which was approximate and useful, but did not quite fit the Planck length, and we had fun conversations about this. So the Planck length, Planck energy, has a correlate called the Planck time constant which is a unit of time which defines sacred in physics, clearly. So physics is also very clear about what sacred time is. There is no subjectivity here. This is objective, serious, hard physics. So I took the equation, which I had already written, which we're using for reinventing a lot of hydrogen energy technologies, hopefully. The, what's called the palladium sputtering frequency. You know, palladium is dodecahedral and key to cold fusion. And the frequency at which it melts most efficiently <laughs> turns out to be the frequency Kansas found out was the best one to split hydrogen. It's called the Kansas hydrolysis. And the world's most famous scientist, Rustam Roy, got very excited. And he, we're playing together with his group in Pennsylvania and believe they'll be doing a lot of reinventing of hydrolysis. Because if you know the musical key signature to ring hydrogen at, then you can obviously reduce the power required. And that's called uh, nonlinear hydrolysis, perhaps. And, but where I went with this was to say, oh, look, that frequency for palladium and hydrogen is my new equation, Planck time times golden ratio equals the frequency of hydrogen. Not just this, the radii of hydrogen, Planck length times golden ratio, but Planck, Planck time times golden ratio equals the frequency of hydrogen. Now, I'm, I'm giving you my reason for having this discussion at this moment is to suggest to you the very, very solid physics behind the concept of fractality in time. That's where I'm going. And, the, and my reason for saying that to you is that if you actually understood that all wave systems, only all wave systems, only self-organize when they're golden ratio fractal, period. Space, time, energy, they all must look like a rose, or they stay in chaos. <laughs> and now we're discussing time. So for example, you'd like miracles and angels in your life. Hello, I'd like miracles and angels in my life. Well, then you need to rearrange your time <coughs> into a fractal. And that would then define synchronicity, a miracle, because, as even uh, as the education book of Gold 7, Jane Roberts, the ability to transfer charge in time depends, I mean, yes, the ability to transfer 
energy information and charge and time depends on that fractality. That's how charge transfer happens, and that's called miracle. Synchronicity, multiply connected topology, all of that is idealized by golden ratio fractality. And now I'm going to show you the proof. Okay? So I took this equation for the timing of hydrogen, and I made the frequencies <laughs> for phase conjugate dielectrics that I used to create fermentation and the electric field to cause all of growth. I took that equation. Now, I'm not going to show you those actual frequencies because the people working with me would like to earn some money someday. <laughs> but anyway, I took this equation and made the frequencies to make phase conjugate dielectric resins. I just take piezoelectric oscillators and I ring a resin at the moment of crystallization and I make growth. We're going to talk about this later. I made the electric field to cause life using that recipe. I did it. It works. We, the PhD chemists measured 50% fermentation rate. We know why your compost co pile gets hotter when you put it where the magnetic lines cross. And now we know how to perfect that. We know why Stonehenge causes seeds to germinate. We know why it's a fractal field. At any rate, I only bring that, we're going to talk more about the technologies later, but I then took that equation, this is the photon belt, all these golden spirals in time stories. I took that equation and Planck time times golden ratio equals the solar year. Planck time, the Planck time constant, the amount of time which is sacred to all of physics, the Planck time constant, the Planck time constant. Well, the Planck length is 1.61 times 10 to the minus 33 centimeters. The Planck time constant is 1.35125 times 10 to the minus 43 seconds. The Planck time, the, the sacred, sacred physics time, Planck time. Time to open ratio equals hydrogen, equals the solar year, and equals the Venus year. Precisely. Or so, so precisely within like one hundredth of a power. And so here's the picture of the Venus year. Oh, what does the Venus year look like? This is the, this is the orbit of Venus. There you have the orbit of Venus. Osiris is returning. He's going to live in that plasma field. Do you know why he's going to live in that plasma field? Venus rising, the morning star. If you read, now later this afternoon we're going to talk about Uras and the story of the returning dragon on Anaki and the history of DNA. Well, at the end of that story you have uh, Anton Park's last book, which is called The Testimony of the Virgin, in which she's trying to reconstitute the body of Enki, Osiris, returning. And where is, he, where is she going to stick him? <laughs> right there. And you know why? Because <laughs> that's the shape of the plasma field, which makes it inhabitable, a living body. Okay. And the top-down view of that is pent. Repent and be saved, says the Baptist minister. <laughs> <laughs> yes, go ahead. <laughs> Could you say the first part of your question a little louder so they hear it? Uh, from a perception point of view, so there's uh, the idea that actually we're expanding into composite material, and that we're expanding into material that is not the same as the composite material. And now how does that work between the ratios correlate We're saying that the number of dimensions you live in is the number of axes of charge rotation superposed in your DNA. That would be a simplistic. So this afternoon's 